Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, we'll discuss orthogonal complements. So we'll begin by letting W be a subspace of Rn. And then we will define the orthogonal complement of W as being the set of all vectors V in Rn, which are orthogonal to each and every vector W in the subspace W. So there's our definition. The, the complement, the orthogonal complement of the subspace capital W is equal to the set of all vectors in Rn which are orthogonal to every vector W in the subspace capital W. <clears throat> so first let's just talk about what this, what this means geometrically. Uh, so let's consider R3 and let W be a subspace of R3. So a subspace of R3, one example could be a plane through the origin. So to imagine that, just simply think of R3 as being the space around you and let the plane through the origin uh, be just the floor. So the origin will be some point in the floor that you can choose for yourself and W will be the floor. <clears throat> so then the orthogonal complement to that plane would be all vectors which are perpendicular to each and every vector in the floor. So in the floor there are many vectors emanating from the point that you choose as the origin and you would like uh, a collection of vectors V which are orthogonal, the dot product is zero, uh, which are orthogonal to each and every one of those vectors in the floor. So can you imagine what that would look like? Uh, it would simply be a, those vectors would make a straight line through the origin perpendicular to the floor. So that would be the orthogonal complement. W would be a line through the origin and it would be perpendicular to, uh, to the plane. So W perp would in some sense be perpendicular to W. Each vector in W perp would be perpendicular orthogonal to each vector in W. The word orthogonal here is slightly better than the word perpendicular because the zero vector will be in W perp. Zero dot any vector will equal zero. So it, it wouldn't quite be geometrically appropriate to say that the zero vector was perpendicular to anything. So we use the word orthogonal uh, to include the zero vector. Uh, let's look at an example. Suppose W is the span of two particular vectors in R3. So suppose W is the span of the vectors 1, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 1. So these are two linearly independent vectors. The dimension of W is equal to 2. So this is a plane. We're expecting W perp to be a line. So to see which line exactly that is, uh, we consider a vector V in R3 to have the form XYZ, and we would like it to be in W perp the orthogonal complement of W. So let's see what requirements uh, V has to have in order for this to be true. V has to be perpendicular to each and every vector in W. So in particular, it has to be perpendicular or orthogonal to the basis vectors. And in fact, it's sufficient that V is perpendicular orthogonal 
to the basis vectors, in that case it will be uh, orthogonal to every vector in W. In fact, it's sufficient for V to be perpendicular to the basis vectors. So let's calculate what would V uh, dot the first basis vector be? That would be x, y, z dot 1, 0, 1. That would be simply x plus z. And if we want x, y, z to be in the orthogonal complement, then that dot product should be 0. So we get the equation x plus z is equal to 0. The other dot product to consider is x, y, z dot with the other basis vector. x, y, z dotted with 0, 1, 1. That would be y plus z. And that should be 0. So in the solutions to this uh, 2 by 3 system, 2 by 3 system, we could have z equal to a parameter t, and then x and y would be negative t. We can say that z is any number whatsoever, and x and y would be the negative of that number in order for x plus z and y plus z to be 0. So in other words, the vector v in R3 would have the form x, y, z, which would equal negative t, negative t, t, or t times negative 1, negative 1, 1. So w perp will be a one-dimensional space. It will be the span of this vector. So w perp is the span of the vector 1, excuse me, negative 1, negative 1, 1. And the dimension of w perp will be 1. It will be a line through the origin. So w was a plane. It was the span of two vectors. And w perp is a line in R3. It's the span of one vector. Uh, notice, as a conclusion, uh, notice that the dimension of w plus the dimension of w perp is equal to the dimension in this example, w is a subspace of R3. So the dimensions add to the dimension of R3. Uh, 2 for w, 1 for w perp, and 3 for R3. And that is a, uh, a theorem, the dimension of w plus the dimension of its orthogonal complement will always give you the dimension of the whole space. Okay, thank you for watching.